All right, so this is what we're making in this lesson. I made it kind of big so you can understand it. So it's a sticker, and you see there's an outside edge to the sticker so that it makes it easy for the person to go like this and peel it off, okay? So one is a cut, and the other one's a perf, and it's still kind of a, a pain to peel off but you can. Now, if it had gone all the way to the edge, though, I, I promise you it would be worse. So it comes off a sheet like this, okay? And then the one cut, the green cut, as you're gonna see in this lesson, scores it like that. And then the other cut is right here. And that one's a really hard one to get off too, but go like that, boom, boom. Now you have a sticker that is a product. All right, so today we are going to be taking some stickers and making them on the VersaWorks software. Um, so we're going to lay out it as an imposition so we don't waste any paper or in this case sticker paper and we're going to learn how to do a cut on it so that it perforates and cuts around the outside edge so before we get started i would say that i've chosen like my 13 year old daughter made some stickers and she has no idea how this whole process works she wanted me to take them to work and now i'm showing you what usually what client work looks like. So this is strictly client work. And you can see how you could translate the client work over to an actual product. All right, cool. So to get started, uh, in Illustrator, we go on create a new document. And then we go print. And then you choose inches, and you want to kind of keep this to your biggest sticker. So let's say the biggest sticker that I want is going to be uh, maybe a four by five. Okay. Now remember, uh, she doesn't understand anything about DPI, dots per inch. Um, she doesn't know anything about resolution. She doesn't know about anything about sizing for a sticker or any of that. Pure client work. Okay, so I went and downloaded these. There's three of them. We got that one, we got this one, and got this one. All right. Now, now we have to try to get a thing for the outside edge to be cut for these. Since they are and have a transparent background, so in this case I got lucky. Um, so we go view, show transparency grid. You see how these have a transparency grid? I can see the background. They aren't white. Okay? It's good. So for each one of these, I have to do kind of a trick to save some time. Because I do not want to draw a vector line around these things at all. It's not going to happen. So I use Alt to make a copy. Alt, click and drag. Okay, they have to be the same size copy. And then I do an image trace. Default, okay. All right, then I go into the settings here. Okay. 
Okay, I turn threshold way up. Way up. Good. And then I go into ignore white. Okay, cool. So now I have this really thick border or thick outline and I'm going to be able to get this edge from it. You'll see. So I'm going to hit expand. Okay. Kind of leave that window over there. I'm going to ungroup everything. And what I'm going to do here is go into outline mode and destroy everything on the inside with the white arrow. So I just hit delete, 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 delete. You don't want any of these little things. Cool. All right, so there we have our outline. Um, this is how we use it. So now we go back to preview mode. Go to the black arrow. And we want this to be the opposite of. So we highlight it first and then go over here and switch the arrow around. So it has an outline just like that. Okay. Now this is the same size of the monkey. We need a little bit of a a little bit of a white border. So what we're gonna do is go object path offset path. Okay, preview that. So that gives us a little bit of a room on the outside edge. Good. So there's two lines here. I'm going to get rid of one. And this is going to be my perforation cut. Okay. I'm going to make a copy of that using Alt, click drag. And then I'm going to go object, path, offset path. And this should be good for um, the next one too. So we'll keep it even. Okay, so this one is going to be my cut path. And that's the first stage I got to do that for every one of these. Um, I'll do this one because it's, it looks a little bit more complex because it has this floating crown thing. So I'll do that with you and then you're going to have to, then I'll do the other one off camera. Okay, so in other words, I got to go back and here's my trace. It's already got most of the features here. I'm just going to ignore white there. Okay, it's already got the threshold. Good. And then I'll expand it. Okay, so this is going to be a compound path. We're going to join the two paths together. Again, I go into outline mode. There we go. And then while I'm in here, I'm just going to go right to the next one. Object, path, offset path. And you can see that got close. It got that little crown almost there. Um, so this is going to be my kiss cut, where it's not completely cut on the outside edge, but I need to get this a little bit further in. Okay, so that's where I take the white arrow and first delete the one on the inside. Then take the points.
with the white arrow and just get them to the inside of this. I start with the two outer edge ones and then I move this one in. So now I have an intersecting path. I will have to ungroup these so that they are two separate paths. I'll choose both of them. And I'll use a thing called Pathfinder. It's under Window Pathfinder. I'm going to, again, highlight both of them and this, use this feature right here. Okay, so now it's one giant thing. And now I need one more for the outer cut. So Object, Path, Offset Path. Good. So now I got those and go back to preview. These, I want to again switch it over to this mode. So it's got an outline. Zoom in. Oh, I didn't see the star. I didn't see that star there. Great. Okay, so I feel the star can be, or did I? And this is just a learning opportunity. Okay, so uh, obviously we got a star here that I missed. So I'm gonna make a new layer in Illustrator. I'm gonna lock this one so I don't screw with it. And I'm gonna use the pen tool to make a shape the size of the star. We could still recover from this. i make that shape all the way around and then close it off. All right, so here's what this thing needs. I need a duplicate of it using Alt. So we're gonna take this one, unlock it. We're gonna highlight this one. And this one. And we're gonna union it. Okay. This one, we're going to go object, path, offset path. We're going to steal this one. Take this one and this one and union it. Boom. Fixed. There we go. We got a monkey, I think. Toaster monkey. I love the purple one. All right, so there we go. And then I'm going to do the screaming monkey with the bleeding eyeballs off camera, because it's the same one. And then we'll meet back and I'll show you the next step. All right, so I decided to film this one because it does have some complexities around this hair stuff. So you might have that scenario. So I noticed that there's these little strands of hair. That might be interesting. So same thing, I traced it, okay. Properties, expand it. Okay, then uh, what we're going to do is ungroup it, and then go back to outline mode. Destroy the little things on the inside, just like we did before. So with all of these these three different variations, there's probably going to be able to solve for a lot of other variations in it. So that's why I'm including it. If this does not pertain to your design, you don't have to watch this, obviously. All 
Okay, so let's go and now take this. And so I don't screw this up, I'm going to make a copy of this one just so I can go back using Alt, click, drag. So object, path, offset path, preview it. Okay. And you can see it is inclusive of it, but it has some flaws. So we're going to delete the middle one, and then we're going to kind of look at these things. So what we can do, this one's very easy. Just delete it. This one over here is a little bit more complex because it doesn't join. You see it? So we could use the points and we could uh, kind of move these points in. We could delete the points like this, leaving two points and go object, path, join. There we go. So that's a way to do that. And of course, destroy all these little things and look for any more of those that we have to manage. Like this one right here. Destroy, destroy, destroy. Zoom in. I don't like this point. I think it's a problem, so I'm going to kind of round that off. Okay, so let's go back to preview. And let's take this one and just kind of look at it over the top of the design. So I'm going to switch it over to stroke mode. Put this over here. Zoom in. And that works. See how it like... Yeah, that works out quite well. Alright, so that one now needs to be copied. Object, path, offset path. Destroy that one, and now that one's got a cut and a kiss cut. All right, there we go. So now we have to lay them out onto separate artboards and get them the right size. So I grab all of them. Hold shift so I can scale them uniformly. And we'll put the monkey on this artboard. Hold shift. Get him to be about as big as the artboard with the widest. Okay, that's good. All right, so now we need two more artboards to support this. We could go three separate PDFs if we wanted to, but in the software we can always choose, you know, like which pages to print to. So in window, uh, artboards, we're going to take this artboard and drag it and drag it, okay? This one's called Monkey. This one's called um, Monkey Eye. And this is Toaster. Okay, sweet. So we've got three separate artboards and our names separate things, but we got a lot of duplication. Okay? So what we do is now start to delete things. Now, we could have done that to begin with, but... Oh. Well. 
because now we have a bunch of toaster monkeys on top of each other. How do we solve that? Because there's no way to hide an artboard. Well, we could think about it, or we could just go. <laughs> like this. Okay, oh, there's no duplications here. See, there's one for one. I thought there was going to be duplications. Okay, so that one fits there. And there we go. Now we have three separate artboards. Now we need the colors. So I'll be right back with the color palettes that we need. All right, so with this video, I will share this document in the, the show notes uh, below it on YouTube. Um, you'll have access to it. I don't memorize this, to be honest with you. So these are the swatch colors that we need to make for, this one is going to be our perf cut, and this is gonna be our cut, okay? So I'm gonna put this on my other screen, over here, maybe not. Okay, let me arrange this so it's friendly for this, Okay, good. So that's over there. Now I can read it and then I can go over here. So what we need to do is make some swatches. So we go window swatches. Okay, um, here I choose to make a new swatch. I guess I'm gonna to have to duplicate one to, oh no, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. So now by clicking on one, I can make the other, duh. So now I highlighted one, then I get the button. All right, so our first one is going to be a spot color, okay? It must be named cut with a capital cut, capital contour, Make sure you get the spelling of contour right. C-O-N-T-O-U-R, cut contour. It's a spot color. It's in the CMYK library, and it's 100% magenta. Okay? So that means all these others get zeroed out. Okay, then I hit OK. All right, let's make another one. This one is going to be called PERF, capital PERF, capital CUT, capital CON, T-O-U-R. It's going to be also spot color. And this one's very weird. So I don't know what they were thinking with this one. 82.75. Six point four seven ninety five point seventy eight point two six. There we go. Very weird, right? Okay, hit OK. So now we have our two and hopefully something goes wrong a little bit so I can show you the how to fix it. But uh, basically how it goes is this middle one, this one right here, is going to be our pink. So 
what we do is we drag, highlight it, and then we can drag this to our outline. Okay? And this outer one is going to be the green one. So that one's going to be this one. And we need to do that over and over again. And there we go. Now, another thing that we might want to do is think about this client wanting, let's say they sold out of monkeys, okay? All right, they sold out of monkeys and they want to produce only that monkey right there rather than the other two. So VersaWorks isn't smart enough to be able to say, well, it is smart enough to say this page, but not this page and these two pages, like only this one and only this one, but without the middle one, okay? So it can't skip pages. It can print all three of them. It can print page one and two, but it can't print page one and three alone. Does that make sense? Okay. So. Once we get this established, we might want to break this apart into three separate PDFs in case the client wanted a specific sticker printed, come to think about it, okay? For right now, however, what we're going to do is we're going to save as, and we're going to save this as a PDF. Because we can do that in Acrobat. We can actually make that happen in Acrobat very easy. So I'll save this to my desktop and call it scroll two. And this one you just leave alone. And then you're going to need to put that on a flash drive in order to get it over to the machine. So desktop, this, and I'm going to translate that over to this one. Boom. All right. Sweet. So we now have a complete workflow over to our flash drive. And now I'll have to hook up to the uh, computer that is actually running versus software to show you the next few steps. Until then, you would have to put your flash drive in that machine and it's located out in the lab. All right, so once you have your PDF for your stickers all laid out, it has the cut lines, everything else, you can take it and put it in the machine and then as a flash drive, and you should have something that looks like this on your screen. Um, flash drive, you're going to drag this over to this area over here. So boom, boom. And then by dragging it out, you get this. And then you double click on it, and then you have this. All right, so how do you know everything worked? Let's say a test. Before you click on it, See these little icons? They're really small. I'm gonna make this a lot bigger so you can see this. So there's two little icons right here, and those two little icons are the cut and the perf. Okay, without those, and they're just below the monkey, it says special items and document information. Hopefully that shows the cursor. Yes, it shows the cursor. Good. All right, so now double click on it and we can lay out the imposition. So we need a lot of these um, and they are five by four. So first thing I do 
is make sure I hit get media with. This will um, align it to whatever media that I have in there. All right, under cut controls, I use print and cut. Okay, let's go back to quality. I want high quality for these. Let's go back to layout. I need more of them, so I'm going to choose copies more. And they should all be lined up like that. Now, if I did a page, a page range, I could do one to three or two to three, but as I said, you can't do one and three. All right, other than that, it looks good. Uh, this is a good run for right now. I do want another run with them smaller, but I'd have to do two runs in this case, one at 50% and one at 100%. And I'm going to hit OK. All right, so you notice at the very beginning of the video, I was struggling with removing these, OK? Not only was I removing them and having a hard time, but removing them from the paper was kind of a struggle, too. Not too bad, but it definitely needed some changes, OK? So in order to support that, I will show you right now, uh, what you need to change, and it changes it all the time because it, it's it's um, made upon uh, changing the blade on the machine. So we write these down in a book. So you should ask, what is the latest version of the cut and perf? And it's written down in the great book next to it. So how we do that, how we change the perf cut, is just before we send it, uh, Double click on it. And if you go into cut controls, okay, the current one, this is the pink and this is the green line, okay? So the current cut force should be 110, okay? And then the current green line or the pink line is 40. So it needed more pressure here and it needed less pressure here. And what happens is if you get that wrong, it will dull the blade. So that's why this is important. All right, now that with those changes, we can then, and this is how you re-rip the job, just like that. with the new settings, and then when it gets done, then you can right click and print it. After it gets done ripping, you can see it's ripping at the very top, and then you can then send it again. So I wanted to add this onto that video, on this video, because it's very important that we change those settings, and why? Because um, if you get them too heavy, as far as the cut is concerned, it could damage the blade. All right. So now go on with the video. And then all you do is right click on it and hit print. It'll basically nag you about the ink always and you hit yes. And now it should be printing. So hopefully you have the right paper in the machine. If you are confused about what paper to put in, make sure you consult your local instructor. All right, other than that, enjoy your stickers.